with others. Chaplain Dillard initiates creating and posting these videos. Their contents and YouTube's linked videos do not necessarily reflect specific beliefs, practices, requirements, or endorsements of the Department of Defense, its subordinate organizations, or other groups with which Chaplain Dillard is affiliated. Welcome back. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about how group values are birthed and developed and strengthened uh, so that you can make choices. And the process is basically the same whether we're talking about your family as a group, the people you work with, your team, uh, organizations that you might be a part of in your leisure time, even our nation. The process is the same. But unless we're aware of the process, then it's very easy to get stuck on autopilot. Maybe you've heard that, uh, it's kind of a gross analogy, but it's true. Uh, you can boil a frog, a live frog in water, if you turn up the heat very slowly. But if you drop him in the hot water, he'll jump back out. So uh, we need to be able to make choices about the values that come to us to make sure that they're honorable and helpful to our group. Here's the process. I'll do this somewhat quickly so that uh, this can be a, a shorter video. If you like, if we're stationed together, you'd like to have me over for a class and a discussion, very participatory, then, then you can do that. First, there are some pre-existing values, relationships, and belief, uh, whether that's your family, your, your work team, uh, your neighborhood, whoever. And there's a positive feedback loop that uh, I'm going to have these values, these relationships, such that they are, and these beliefs, because this works for me, and whatever your goals are, and there are many types of goals. This is always overlaid uh, or undergirded by a foundation or a context. And there's two parts to that. First is there the growing speed and the breadth of new information. Now, centuries ago, to get new information, somebody had to walk to your house and bring it to you. Or if they were a little more wealthy, they could bring it to you on horseback. Later there was shipping, and then there was rail, uh, and then there was uh, automotive. And so the information came more quickly. And if we speed and fast forward ahead, there's the internet. Now everybody has a smartphone, or almost everybody. Uh, and the mediums of information that come to us are also broader. Now we have Facebook and Twitter uh, and our cell phones and uh, magazines and books. So the breadth and the number of uh, different types of media that bring you the information, new information about others' values, others' relationships, and others' beliefs gives you more options. And this speeds uh, the, the ability to change and even change itself. It's, it's the reason that an era used to be hundreds of years and now it can be decades or even less. Then there is some type of crisis event, some type of paradigm shift event. And I made a few notes here just to make sure I could give you some specifics and didn't have to go off the top of my head. These can be sudden or subtle. Some examples of subtle national changes, for example, are uh, greater ethnic diversity in our country. That happens over time. Moving from a cash-focused society to a credit-focused society. The thematic content of entertainment media, such as the lyrics and music, the theme of TV shows and film, all those change subtly over time, but because it's all around us, it undergirds us, it's over us, it's in our eyes and ears all the time, it changes how we uh, value things or what we value. It gives us models of relationship, it gives us examples of others' beliefs, and that is uh, affecting our perception of options. Some sudden national changes, technological innovations like the introduction of the personal computer so that everybody has access to the internet, smartphones, not just access at your desk but wherever you are, the Affordable Care Act uh, so that everybody now uh, can have some type of free health care, uh, or 9-11. These are sudden paradigm shifts that impact all of us living in the United States. Some subtle personal changes, family life, cycle, family life cycle transitions. Your child learns to walk. Your child goes to school. Your child becomes a teenager and hormones uh, take over. Your child graduates and moves out, or they move back. Your loved one is aging. You're aging. Retirement is not uh, what you thought it might be or it's more than you thought it could be. New friends and co-workers around you, uh, those are all examples of subtle 
personal changes because the changes they go through affect you, right? What's going on in their family and their neighborhood changes them, which impacts you. Some examples of sudden personal changes. You get promoted. That might be a positive or a negative stress. What do I do with this new money, this new responsibility? Moving to a new place or a new area. I'm leaving my old friends and now I have new ones. Are they going to be friends or not? The loss of a loved one. Uh, many, many different types of changes that can happen to us personally or nationally, subtly or suddenly. But they impact us. Going back to our slides now, all of a sudden, the things that were working for us, uh, we have to say, maybe I just need to try more of the same. But we get negative feedback this time because it's such a paradigm shift event that what used to work for us doesn't work anymore. And so we try something new. Maybe I need to change, and it can be any number of things. The nature of how I relate to others. Maybe new relationships. Maybe cutting off old relationships. Different values that we will try out or get stronger in or put behind us. Different types of beliefs. And when we begin, sometimes through a trial and error process, to get positive feedback, then that begins to strengthen the new values. And of course, the new ways that we relate to others and new beliefs. This is primarily about values. But it's just as true about the nature of relationships and beliefs because they're all interconnected. Now, once that uh, new set of values becomes more firm, the old set of values uh, kind of fades into the background. It doesn't seem um, as important or relevant or as much a part of us anymore because we've had to change. Even the positive feedback loop becomes uh, more second nature, however, we can see that that overlay of information is still part of our context. There is still new information coming to us. In fact, because of technology and the way things are today, it's coming faster. It's coming through even more mediums. And whoever promotes that new information, if it happens fast enough, uh, that will begin to cause us questions again about what should I value until, of course, there's a new paradigm shift event. And there are always paradigm shift events. So what do we do with this information? Well, here's some things to think about. We need to always ask ourselves, what have I been seeking through my values and relationships and beliefs? For example, safety, connection, enjoyment, Forgiveness, meaning, identity, progress, all of those are different types of values, but they're not all the values. And some of them we seek more intently, some less intently, but the paradigm shift event and how we uh, get feedback from that in our relationships and our current values and current beliefs will either uh, increase uh, and strengthen new values or not. It can be a trial and error event until we settle on something that really works for us, which brings us to another question. Have the things, the goals that I've been uh, honoring, the values I've been honoring, uh, are they truly honorable? Are they eternally good? Have the goals been rewarding? In other words, have they been enjoyably good in my relationship specifically? Have my means toward those goals been helpful, meaning effectively good? And lastly, given these changes uh, that have come upon me, subtly or suddenly, what should I change and what should I hold on to even more tightly? Why and how? Now, whether you're talking about your national values, your organizational values at work, your family values, Group values is always the same process. Hope that's been helpful to you. If we're stationed together, invite me over. We'll discuss this in more specificity. Uh, we'll make it nice and safe for everybody to talk freely. Because ultimately, it's up to being more self-aware. What do I value now? What do others value? So that we can choose values that are appropriate to our situations, that are honorable, and that are helpful to our teams. Hope that's been helpful to you. See you next time.